musicians from the world of jazz and improvisation. I'm Andrea Keller and it's a great thrill for me today to be able to speak with Gian Slater. Welcome Gian, thanks for joining me. Thanks Andy, great to be here. My first question, what have been the pivotal events in your musical journey? Uh, I think when I first discovered jazz and improvisation in high school, that was a pivotal moment. I'd, I'd been writing music and um, and singing, I guess, folk music and um, some classical music. And, you know, I, I did love singing folk and, I, of course, I loved writing my own songs and singing them. But um, when I discovered jazz and particularly improvisation, um, yeah, it really sort of lit a, uh, something in my brain and I really... Um, I really, really love loved it and sort of took to it. Um, so that was one of the pivotal moments. And the, I think the second sort of pivotal moment is probably a collection of pivotal moments that um, that are linked to each of the albums that I've made. So I think every time I've made an album and released it, it's um, signified a, a really significant and pivotal moment in my musical journey where I'm exploring something quite different. Uh, maybe uh, it's a it's a really uh, significant new musical collaboration or a or um, sort of relationship. Maybe it's um, just that it's a really different way of composing music and sort of working within a slightly different kind of stylistic realm. But those have been really definitely pivotal moments. Um, and then the third sort of way that I would think about a pivotal moment in my career are definitely around mentors and teachers. So I think for me, particularly when I was studying at the VCA, um, meeting my teachers and mentors like yourself, Andrea, not just meeting, I'm, I'm uh, um, being taught by these people was really absolutely fantastic and invaluable, but actually getting to play with you um, is a de definitely a very pivotal moment. And um, yeah, others like Tony Gould and Jeff Hughes, um, really important moments. And I think, you know, they definitely shape um, the way that you move forward and the way that you, um, yeah, you think about making music. I think um, that's been really important. And I think. Um, as an extension of that, meeting uh, some of my great vocal heroes, um, you know, I've been really lucky to meet some of my absolute all-time favourite singers on the planet and get to know them. And um, so when I met Norma Winston, that was really amazing because her, her music really, I guess listening to her music even for the first time, really changed um, me and my music making so being able to meet her and talk to her about that music and have her listen to my music was really special um also meeting theo blackman and kate mcgarry two of my other favorite singers uh, and they've sort of remained kind of mentors and friends that i sort of communicate with semi-regularly and um they're always very supportive of any music that i put out into the world and you know, it's. I think having those mentors there, there in your life is very important because it also helps you um, put your music out into the world and imagine them listening to it. <laughs> um, I think is really nice because you uh, sometimes when you put your music out into the world, it's you know you might not be sure who's interested in hearing it. And uh, knowing that the people that you really love are interested in hearing it is a really um, lovely, wonderful thing. So those are my three big, you know, pivotal things. I guess they're kind of areas of of um, of aspects of my my journey that have definitely shaped who I am, um, and as such, they're definitely pivotal. Fantastic. Yeah. And what about obstacles? What sort of obstacles have you faced in your musical journey and how have you dealt with them? Well, I think probably the biggest obstacle for me has been working out where I fit 
in the scheme of things. I think that um, that one of the things that maybe has been a blessing about the way that I am and, and the music that I make but can also be a curse <laughs> is that it doesn't always fit into a neat box. It's so it can be hard to find opportunities to to um, to put that music, whether it be um, performance opportunities or you know recording opportunities, um, and so that's definitely been a big obstacle. And I think uh, one of the big aspects of that has been the sort of perhaps the stereotyping around singing, particularly in jazz. Um, and that's definitely been an obstacle that I've come up against time and time again. Um, and I guess the way, I mean, the first aspect of that obstacle uh, in terms of where my music fits is still an obstacle that looms very large for me. And so I'm not really sure I have strategies for that obstacle. <laughs> Aside from, I guess, maybe um, the idea that uh, that it's it's okay if it doesn't fit into a a place and there's not there's not really anything that I would change to make it to make it fit and um, that's definitely a realization that I've had along the way that perhaps gives me more confidence to sort of move through that that kind of big obstacle um, but in terms of the stereotyping aspect I think yeah I've become much more um, comfortable, I guess, with just uh, putting myself into a space and not feeling that I need to prove myself, um, you know, or that I always need to sort of offer a counter um, type to that stereotype. Um, I feel that, yeah, I've learnt to just, you know, just be inside the music and do do the best that I can do um, and try and sort of put those things really to the side. Um, you know, I think I've probably, I've probably done that a lot throughout my career, even early on. I've tried to um, put those things to the side and not, not let them stop me making the music that I want to make. So yeah, those, because those stereotypes can be very subtle. They can have very subtle sort of effects on the way that people treat you. Um, or they can have very large effects on, on, for example, the obstacle of opportunity. And I think once I um, appreciated that, okay, I'm not getting that performance opportunity because I am not that stereotypical singer that they, that, that they want for that opportunity, it sort of relieved in me the sense of, of competition that I was competing for that spot it made me feel well actually that's not my spot you know it's just actually not my spot so I, don't, I shouldn't worry about trying to compete in that space um, so yeah so that's been a big obstacle and I think you know I continue I will continue to face that particular obstacle um, throughout my career and um, you know, it's hopefully <laughs> as things go on, there may be more um, ways, creative ways that I can find um, places for my music to go. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. That's really important. Uh, yeah. What about uh, a motto or a personal philosophy? Do you have anything that particularly guides you or is there some advice that you'd like to share with younger musicians? Well, probably, as I said, it's it 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 can be a curse to kind of, you know, um, occupy your own space and and um, try and make that your sort of main identity. Um, I guess as a musician, that that you're doing your own thing. But um, you know, as cheesy as it sounds, I feel that being yourself is. Um, it's definitely a motto of mine and I I think um, it's the more that I teach different singers interested in different things, um, whether it be the kind of style of music that they want to make or the way they want to sing, um, I'm really drawn to helping people find that place where they are exploring something true to them. Um, so that's definitely a big motto and 
it it guides the way that I use my voice you know I really don't um, put on a voice I don't play characters when I sing I sing with my voice it doesn't matter what style or what whose music I'm singing I I will use my voice and I think um, yeah that's that's definitely something that that uh, is very important to me and uh, in my writing as well in the music that I write um, you know that I feel uh, that I feel that there's a sense of integrity and honesty in what I'm putting forward um, you know it's something that's driven that that what I'm putting forward is something driven by my curiosity and my interests and not by some external idea of what um, perhaps is popular or fashionable or cool you know so I think that's yeah that's a really definitely a guiding motto um, for me and it always will be not just for myself but for my teaching um, you know it's it's fantastic to have influences and role models and to learn uh, well in fact very very important to learn every kind of everything you can from from people uh, that that do it really well but I think um, uh, through that trying to find a way to um, to map it onto who you are um, and kind of not fight not fight the aspects of who you are that maybe feel um, really vulnerable just kind of letting yourself be vulnerable and and um, and embracing those things yeah wonderfully said and could you please nominate an album or a track of your creation that is particularly important or significant to you and tell us a little bit about it yes yeah, so as I mentioned at the start definitely my albums each album has been significant um, and it's sort of hard to pick one actually but I've picked my it's sort of my third album which was called creatures at the crossroads and it was an album that I uh, that I really from the absolute get-go get-go felt that I had extreme creative freedom over um, it was really completely a hundred percent guided by my curiosity in um, in sort of experimenting with a uh, kind of different way of doing things um, and every kind of bit of music on there is is um, is really my vision so it was it it was a project with an absolutely uh, wonderful pianist who is no longer with us that was a very significant and special part of it um, and he his kind of imprint on the sound of it is really really significant but I think um, you know uh, my sort of vision for it and all of the kind of piano parts uh, were composed pretty much and so yeah it felt like a very complete sort of creative work and it really took me into a, new, uh, a you know it's, it's I guess it was a really significant p pivotal mo moment because not only was it a a different way of maybe writing music but it was also just the kinds of uh, um, levels of considerations about the music was something that was new to me so I really thought about the whole album as one arc I really thought about um, texture and I used extended techniques um, I really wanted to think about showcasing what my voice could do in a really different way I was really unafraid of sort of incorporating um, different ways of improvising um, yeah so I think that that would that's probably really when I look at all of the albums I've made I'm proud of all of them um, that one's a very significant one and I think it probably I'm not sure I'll be able to top it in terms of <laughs> intensity I also spent like a very intense time writing it you know and um, I'm not sure I'll get that time back again <laughs> to be so immersed in writing a piece of music um, to really be breathing it living and breathing it um, all day every day for months um, and so that 
that will always be special remembering that kind of really immersive time um, and I always talk to students about this you know to really enjoy when you're able to in your life enjoy your capacity to really immerse um, because as life goes on you may not um, have that time um, so yeah that's the one <laughs> thanks Jan. I, I'm really looking forward to sharing that with my students and uh, thank you so much for your time today and for sharing some of your story and musical journey with us I really appreciate it uh, you've really shared some wonderful things and wishing you all the best thanks Andy bye